Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ancient Warfare Answers with me, Murray, your weekly escape from the real world to think about ancient warfare related stuff. Uh, you, of course, can ask a question. That's what I do. I answer readers, viewers, and listeners' questions. You can send us a postcard, send us an email, comment on a previous video, or you can back us on Patreon. Um, that's an either or. You don't have to do one or the other. You can do both. You can do either. And Patreon, we've got three different levels of support. Uh, Legionary, Optio, and Centurion. Uh, Legionary, you is a dollar uh, and a time. Optio is five, and you get a digital copy of the magazine. Centurion is ten, and you get a physical copy of the magazine. Uh, but of course, you can ask us a question however you'd like. This question is an interesting one. This is from John. Hi, Murray, and all. Quick question for Ancient Warfare Answers. Sorry, it's not a postcard. So am I, but at least I got it fast. Uh, Murray mentioned the last kingdom in the Finnis Britannii episode. My question is, how accurate do you feel last kingdom is in its overall theme and description of the period? Uh, I guess that the simple color scheme that everyone wears are not the best example of accuracy. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Uh, so the interesting thing there for me is uh, that I started reading the last kingdom as books, um, Bernard Cornwall being my sort of favorite ancient slash medieval uh, historical novelist, and 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 of course uh, Napoleonic too. For those of you who are fans of Sharp, and in that sense, I think that he gives the best description of a shield wall warfare in in fiction of how a shield wall war works and and the mindset of fighting in a shield wall. And I think I talked about it way back when I was writing about. Uh, medieval warfare on film because the budget of, of doing a proper shield wall is obviously a little bit too much for most television series and so they don't really get into the shield wall quite as much uh this one did as did vikings early episodes of vikings probably are the two best shield wall depictions that i've seen and so that in a way was was really good to see i think you're right the medieval period and the and the dark ages probably are far more colorful than we give them credit for the you know the range of colours that's are that are available in natural dyes are really quite remarkable and you know a lot more bright colours oranges yellows greens than we see again I think I've spoken before about one of the bugbears of of medieval uh, film and ancient film peasants are always dirty not clean uh, and they always wear fur on the outside. As opposed to no, no, no. The fur's the warm bit. It's what you wear on the inside. Even you know, even now, we're, there's the sheepskin on the inside, close to me, and the skin is on the outside because it's waterproof. So the other way round, which you get in film, very odd, very, very odd. And I don't know why they don't don't fix that. It would be very easy to fix, and especially barbarians. So poor old Vikings get that all the time that that they <laughs> wear their fur wear their fur in reverse. Anyway, uh, so I think there's a real interesting aspect of the the history of the period. And when you read the history of the period, obviously the, the series and the, the, the novels go beyond what we know. And there's a lot of reading between the lines. Uthred, son of Uthred, is an invention, even though I think Bernard Cornwall talks about it being a, you know, an ancestor and a real person and, and the castle being a, a you know, his his ancient homeland the you know the connections between uh, alfred and, and others are, are tricky to to draw but they've been well drawn in the books and then in the series and i know there was some disappointment with the final film but i think i think it's 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 more of a a suggestion of a world and an inspiration rather than uh getting your history from a, a television series um, and i think that's true of any television series and film that they aren't they aren't history. They're the inspiration to go and read more history. And you run the the issue there of, of course, and I had this when Gladiator came out in 2000. I was tutoring Roman history at, at Sydney Uni. And we had so many people come and join to do Roman history and then get disappointed that it wasn't like the film. Uh, you know, and even the gladiatorial combat wasn't like the film. And obviously with Gladiator 2 coming out, we'll see what happens in, in 2024. But that idea of people being inspired to study Roman history and then being disappointed by the reality, uh, you know, and then leaving it, I think is a really interesting factor 
in in what inspires you to study any subject, whether it be a book, a painting, a piece of music, uh, uh, you know, a, a play, a film, a television series. Take your inspiration where you get it. But if you then go and research it further and go, actually, no, I'm not interested anymore. That's that's disappointing me or, or disillusioning me or whatever. Stop so that you're not killing the thing you love and just enjoy it for what you enjoy it for. Or if you find that researching the real history is more or, or equally involving and equally rewarding, go down that path and find where your your uh, your limit lies, your limites. Um, because I find with with, for instance, an ancient warfare magazine, we've got uh, a range of authors who are writing material for general readership, not for academic readership. But many of them are, in fact, academics in the sense of their their writing is top notch research that's up to date and and is presented in a way that is digestible. You know, there's not thousands of footnotes. I, I like footnotes, don't get me wrong. When you find that you read something in the magazine that challenges your perception of a particular topic or makes you want to research it further, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, you know, a paper that asks more questions than it answers isn't necessarily a an annoyance. It can be, oh, I'm going to go and read this, I'm going to go and read that, I'm going to go and read that. So in many ways, when you see a a television series like The Last Kingdom, and you say, I'm going to go and research what ancient clothing would have looked like or medieval clothing would have looked like, that can often lead you to discover, oh, much more colourful, much more clean than, you know, one of the things we know is that probably the Vikings were one of the cleanest medieval peoples, uh, and that's not what we're shown in, in, you know, depictions of barbarians. Probably weren't quite as tattooed as we get shown there either. But anyway, um, it's a tricky one because I think often you're going to need a very long documentary series to explain to you what actually happened, what it actually looked like. Uh, and even then, the next time those societies are put on on film or on, on screen, we'll go back to the stereotypes. And it's a very hard, a bit like Roman legionaries, that they always look the same. They always look like the Trajan's Column kind of legionary. And we know that that wasn't the most common appearance of a Roman legionary over the thousand years that they existed. So I think it's it's a tricky one because obviously seeing something visual is very persuasive and explaining either that, that we don't know that that's what they look like or trying to break down that 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 wasn't the way that they looked is very tricky. You know, you get it with gladiatorial combat and the thumbs down, thumbs up, and the idea that actually that's not, and the manun missio sort of um, posture that you get on some of the some of the reliefs of, of gladiators. So we we don't know. Even the idea that every gladiatorial combat was to the death. It's like, well, no one's going to invest in a sport where you lose fifty percent of your investment every single time there's a game. Uh, and so you know, you get these gladiators who survive losing fights because they were not put to death. So, uh, you know, all of those sorts of things are uh, peculiar and intriguing. And often you come to a we don't know, but often you can come to a here's something else you can read, here's another thing you can read, and here's another thing you can read. And often what you'll find, like in my previous description of the armies, for instance, we don't get that description of Persian armies later. And we get Herodotus's description of Xerxes' army in the 5th century BC. We generally have to use that for Persian armies into the time of, uh, of Alexander the Great, because we don't have an alternative. And in many cases, these cultures are continuous, and therefore they wouldn't probably have changed appearance uh, that much. You get it with the the evolution of of the of the hoplite. You get it with the the evolution of the Roman legionary. Which bit of equipment comes in when? How long does a sword last? How long does a helmet last? How long does a chain a suit of chainmail last? And one of the things we get in in academia is a very short window for when that was being used. And I think swords, helmets, armor, they're used for a lot longer than we 
tend to give them credit for because you know we find in the in the news today that someone can excavate a sword and that sword is still sharp you could still use it now hundreds if not thousands of years later so the idea that you would you know pull granddad's sword off the off the mantelpiece and go and fight with it is completely believable you know uh, again in a much later period you get the idea of some cultures using muskets well after the musket has been superseded, but it works. <laughs> it's still as deadly. Might not be as effective, but you know you can still get a lucky shot. Anyway, so all of that is just to say that any visual medium that is made by a, a television company or a, or a film company has reasons not to make things historically accurate, uh, much as that annoys any historian. But if it inspires you to go and find out more, great, it's done its job. Um, but, you know, their, their job is to tell a story, in particular narrative arc, which is fictional, even if it's based on history. So I can appreciate them for that. And then I'm perfectly happy to go off on a, a rabbit hole to find out what, what we really know, even if what we really know is disappointingly brief. Anyway, join me for another Ancient Warfare Answers. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.